You're here, I'm here. Good music here to be played and to be talked about. If I've earned your subscription by the end of this video, I'll be ever so grateful. I'm Alan, this is Alan Reacts. See you on that side of the tape. Hello all. Oh, let me turn that off. Hello all, welcome to the channel. So, Dan Vask, Amazing Grace. We're going to do a deep dive on this. This is my first time hearing him sing it, but I know a fair bit about the origins of the song, bits you might not know. So it's going to be a, a deeper analysis of where this song belongs, where it comes from, as well as me watching him sing. Gethsemane, I loved, and this is why I'm doing this. And this is from his channel. And if you're not subscribed, why not? To his channel. Mine is just a bonus, whatever. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught. Well, he threw me off there. It's a beautiful, beautiful rendition and, and we'll come to that at the end when I share my thoughts. But that moment there, in 1971, in the UK, this song, the musical version of it, by the band of the Scottish Royal Dragoon Guards, a military band, was the best-selling single of the year in 1971 in the UK. The best-selling album of that year and the year after was Bridge Over Troubled Water. In America, conversely, the best-selling album of 1971 was Jesus Christ Superstar, and I think it was Three Dog Night had the biggest single of the year. So there's just a real parallel there that instantly it's took me back to that military band. And I played in a military band, drums, um, when I was a kid, a soldier. And just that moment there, you could hear the beat, boom. Boom. That's what you get when you were marching. It's that 
eighth step, not fourth step, to keep you in time. And I don't know if he's if he knows that song, the musical version, because it's eerily draws on that ability to throw in the music. It sounds like pipes. It sounds like everything. It's harmonica, and that just threw me off. I was not expecting that. God. But isn't he a beautiful singer? Let's hear the rest of the song and I'll pull it all together at the end, guys. He's in prayer at the moment. That's what he's doing for me. First things first, that little metal turnaround at the end and the inflection as he goes into that metal tone, which I know he's done because when I did get so many guys, the responses, the encouragement was just overwhelming. I'll be honest with you. Right down to, well, just everything. But I'd mentioned in the video, I wonder if he did Amazing Grace, and I don't know why I did that. Maybe because Amazing Grace doesn't appear in Jesus Christ Superstar. It really doesn't, as you all will know that. So Amazing Grace itself, it's actually a poem by John Newton that he penned in 1700s, mid-1700s, 1730s, 1740s, and he penned it on the back of his conversion to Christianity. He became an Anglican priest. And it was really born of the fact his conversion to Christianity and his, his really a reflection on what he'd learned about himself and his involvement in the slave trade. And he was involved in the slave trade and went on to become an abolitionist and was friends with William Wilberforce. And, but the first time this appears as a song is in the 1800s and it's to a tune called New Britain. But it's that I am aware of. But it's just... I've heard this song many times in many different formats. And this is, yeah, I can't say I've heard a better version vocally. I'm really fond of the, the military band version, which was a massive hit in the UK, as I've already said. And I think I'll put that on the channel. Because if you listen to that, guys, and please do, because you'll see what I'm talking about when he gets the harmonica out. He has to know. He has to know. It doesn't make sense that he's not heard that version before. Uh, and if he hasn't, then fair enough. But it's eerily, eerily draws on that. It leans into that, that musical insertion, if you like. And then his little metal, high-pitched scream, if you like. It's, it's, it's in praise. It really is in praise. And again, with the, with the way he presents, don't tread on me. That, was, that wasn't... I don't think you'll do things innocently, a performer at this level but it was just stripped back, beautiful. 
he laid himself bare for that performance and put it all into it for me. That's what I saw. And if he ever looked at the camera, I'd probably freak out. But I love that, guys, and I hope everyone else does. But yeah, it's not, it wasn't traditionally a Christ, Christian hymn. It was a poem written by John Newton, as I've said, that became a Christian hymn and a bedrock of Christian songs. It's a bit bluesy as well, if I'm honest, when it's done right and done in different ways, which I've heard. I loved it. I hope you all did too. Please, guys, comment as normal because I want to know where to go next. I've got, like, I think you guys have sent me about 70 different songs, but I'm kind of seeing which one comes through the most. Um, it does all sorts there, so we'll see. But till next time, guys, take care. This is Alan Reacts. I'm Alan, your host. If I've earned your subscription by the end of this video, I'll be ever, ever, ever so grateful. But most of all, I want you to have a good time. I'm Alan. This is Alan Reacts. See you on that side of the table.